Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today I'm updating my top five best CPU list. It's been about six months now since we last did this. So about time we updated and had a look at what's changed. Once again, the five categories are best budget CPU, best value all rounder desktop CPU, best value productivity CPU, best performance gaming CPU, and then the best extreme desktop CPU. So let's get into the picks. First up, we have our best budget CPU pick, and quite a lot has changed in this market segment since our update six months ago. In that time, we've seen the arrival of AMD's third generation Ryzen 3 series, as well as Intel's 10th gen Core i3 range. So quite a few new CPUs to pick from, but before we get to that, here's a brief history of this category. Back in 2017, the Intel Pentium G4560 was our best budget CPU. Then the following year in mid-2018, the Ryzen 3 2200G took over and remained our best option throughout 2018. In fact, we only dropped it in favor of the 2400G once pricing started to drop for the SMT-enabled APU. And then later in 2019, recommended the 3400G. Now, it's 2020 and the Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X have been added to the mix along with the Core i3-10100. By far the best option here is the Ryzen 3 3300X. The value this CPU offers at the $120 US price point is unprecedented. And while the 3100 is also quite a good deal at $100, it's well worth spending the extra $20 for the 3300X to get all cores in a single CCX. The Ryzen 3 3300X generally beats the Core i3-10100 when it comes to gaming performance, and it's typically around 20% faster in core heavy applications. Also, as a bonus, the Ryzen processor is unlocked, so the 3300X can be overclocked for even greater performance, while memory overclocking is supported on affordable B450 motherboards. This one's really a slam dunk for AMD. Intel made an attempt to become a bit more competitive, but ultimately it was a case of too little, too late. For two years now, our best value all around a desktop CPU category has been dominated by six core 12 thread AMD Ryzen 5 processors. In 2017, it was the Ryzen 5 1600. In 2018, the 2600 and 2600X, and then the 2600 again in early 2019 after massive price cuts. And then by year's end, we went with the Ryzen 5 3600. Nothing has really changed in the last six months. The Ryzen 5 3600 is still by far the best value desktop CPU. In fact, recently the 3600 has become even better value with sale prices dropping it as low as $175 US. Though at the time of making this video, it appears to have jumped back up to $200. But even there, it's still a great value option. The 10th gen alternative from Intel would be the Core i5-10400, and while not a terrible alternative, the Ryzen processor is up to 20% faster for productivity tasks while delivering comparable gaming performance. A key advantage of the Ryzen processor is the fact that it can be overclocked on affordable B450 motherboards, which also support higher memory speeds. The Core i5-10400, on the other hand, that requires a Z490 motherboard, and the cheaper models that you should entertain purchasing cost around $170 US, so substantially more than a quality B450 board. So in short, you're getting better performance at a more affordable price, and that for me is a win-win. Now, if Intel were to open up memory overclocking on B460 and H410 boards, then I could certainly entertain the idea of recommending locked Core i5 processors as alternatives for those strictly gaming. But short of that, the Intel part just isn't compelling enough for me, and therefore the Ryzen 5 3600 once again takes our best value all-rounder award. When it comes to productivity, it doesn't really matter what price point you're talking about. In 2020, AMD really does dominate across the board. If you want to get work done on the cheap, nothing beats the Ryzen 3 3300X. Have a little bit more money to spend, Ryzen 5 3600. Even more money, Ryzen 7. Even more money again, you can go Ryzen 9, all the way up to something like the 16 core 3950X. And if you happen to have oodles of cash on hand, well, there's the third generation Threadripper range, but we'll get to those in a minute. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is there are a number of Ryzen processors we could pick for this category and really should. So this is more of a general Ryzen 7 slash Ryzen 9 pick. For example, the 3700X is $285 right now. It's amazing value at that price for a powerful eight core 16 thread processor. 
and I'd still recommend it over spending $50 more on the 3800X. Then there's the 3900X for around $400. Again, amazing value given you're getting a 12 core, 24 thread processor, something previously unheard of for a mainstream desktop CPU. Then at the head of the AM4 Ryzen food chain is the 3950X. It's a bit of a pricey item at $700 and it might cost 40% more than the Intel Core i9 10900K, but it is generally over 40% faster in core heavy workloads. So again, an amazing deal for a 16 core 32 thread processor. And that leaves you with a good option at $300, $400 and $700 to pick from. Although I had expected the Intel Core i3-10100 and Core i5-10400 to be more compelling for gamers than they ultimately turned out to be, I was pleasantly surprised by the Core i5-10600K. Sure, I ended up going with the Ryzen 5 3600 as the best all-rounder, and I think few could argue that it's not the more well-rounded product, but if you are primarily gaming, the 10600K is a very attractive option. It's priced to compete with the Ryzen 7 3700X, and again, if you're mostly interested in productivity performance, then get the AMD processor, as it's faster with its two extra cores. But if you're gaming, the name of the game, well, yeah, it's the Core i5-10600K. It's a pretty great gaming processor. Throw it on a relatively affordable Z490 motherboard, MSI's Tomahawk, for example, $190, that seems like a pretty good motherboard to go with, and then put $50 towards a decent air cooler, and you have the makings of a seriously high-end gaming system. Overclocked in most games, it can deliver Core i9 10900K light performance, and at around 40% cheaper, that's kind of nice. So while I'm partial to the Core i5-10600K, if we're being true to this category, it's the Core i9-10900K that is really the best performance gaming CPU. Either way though, it is an unlocked 10th gen core processor that'll deliver maximum gaming performance, and therefore I suggest that budget conscious gamers aim for the 10600K, while those with deep pockets and maybe an RTX 2080 Ti in their sight opt for the 10900K. Yeah, well, this one's pretty easy, isn't it? Third gen Threadripper, what more do I need to say, really? If you've seen the reviews, well, you know everything you need to know. And yeah, I mean, they are pretty bloody expensive, but if you do seek the ultimate in productivity performance, the price probably isn't going to be your number one concern. That said, if $3,500 US is a bit rich for your blood, then the 3700X or 3960X might be better alternatives to the insane 64-core, 128-thread beast that is the 3990X. For example, the 32-core 3970X can be had for $1,900 US, while the 3960X comes in at a slightly more affordable $1,400 US. I personally have been using the Threadripper 3960X in my main gaming slash editing rig for a little over six months now, and the experience has been flawless. As an example, I can warp stabilize over a dozen 4K clips in Premiere while also using the same computer to create benchmark graphs in Excel or thumbnails in Photoshop without noticing any kind of lag or slowdown. And prior to that, I was testing out the Core i9-9900K, which by all accounts is two and a half times cheaper, but if I tried to simultaneously use more than about half a dozen warp stabilization processes, Premiere would crash and there was no chance I was doing any background tasks like creating benchmark graphs or thumbnails or whatever, especially without any serious system lag or again, a risk of crashing. Of course, a Cascade Lake X part would be better suited for such productivity tasks, but those basically don't exist. And even if they did, the flagship 18-core 10980XE is ill-equipped to go up against any of the third-gen Threadripper processors. So as I said, this category is an easy one. It's really great to see so many options available in 2020, and whether you're talking about AMD or Intel, I don't think you can go too wrong. For example, the Ryzen 5 3600 might be our preference over the Core i5-10400, but if you were to end up with the Intel processor, you wouldn't exactly be disappointed with the experience. It's a very capable gaming chip, and application performance is still strong. Intel's 10th gen lineup is much more competitive than the 9th generation ever was, offering SMT support across the board and, of course, better pricing. Ultimately, though, they're still beaten by AMD on almost all fronts, but it seems to be a situation where supply is still struggling to meet the demand, so Intel doesn't need to be any more competitive on pricing than they currently are. Still, I've had some interesting conversations with a few local retailers that have told me the Ryzen 5 3600 alone has heavily outsold Intel's entire 
10th gen range. And there's also publicly available evidence that this is the case over at Amazon, where you'll find the 3600 as the number one best seller with the best selling 10th gen Intel part, the Core i5-10400, way down in 15th position. This has been going on for a while now and the crunch point for Intel can't be all that far away. And that's probably why the Intel CEO is telling the public that benchmarks no longer matter. At the end of the day though, this all spells good news for consumers as we're expecting to see even better value out of the 11th Gen Core series and AMD's Ryzen 4000 series as the CPU wars continue to heat up. But that is a story for another day. In the meantime though, if you're in need of a new upgrade, there are a number of great options available at a range of prices. And of course, we've just given you our top picks in this video. And if there's anything you'd like to add or comment, then well, there's the comment section down below where you can do exactly that. But that is gonna do it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.